G'day there, this is Sarah from Amateur Filmies and today I'll be taking you through seven zombie movies that every zombie lover needs to see. So this is just seven underrated zombie films that I think are pretty underappreciated and need to be watched more. Um, you might not even consider them underrated, which is fair enough, and you might not even consider them zombie films, but in my mind a zombie film is a, a film where someone sort of gets infected by something and then they undergo some changes and then they have the urge and the desire to infect other people. So that's a pretty wide range of movies, if you ask me. And so how I'll sort these films is I'll sort them by their popularity. And so what I'll do is I'll start off with the most popular one according to IMDb votes, and then I'll finish with the most obscure one or the one with the least amount of IMDb votes. So here are the seven and I hope you enjoy. So number seven has a rating of five with 32,929 votes on IMDb and that is Wreck 3 or Wreck Genesis. For a third installment in a horror franchise, I was actually really impressed with Wreck 3. It surrounds a couple whose wedding sort of takes a turn for the worst when a zombie outbreak happens and their guests start being turned and it leads to absolute chaos. This film goes between handheld camera footage from different guests to just normal shots of different people and the horror unfolding. And it's actually a really good blend of horror and comedy. Some may not even consider the zombies within this zombies because they have like religious origins. They're sort of like demons being summoned into human bodies. So it's more like, I guess you could say um, the Evil Dead franchise, but they people get infected through bites. So they're zombies in that respect. But either way, it's really fun and I highly recommend it. So number six has a rating of 6.6 .6 with 28,929 votes and that is Pontypool. This is actually one of my favorites on this list. It is incredibly tense and it has one of the most like unique storylines and it actually stars Stephen McCaddy who is becoming quickly one of my favorite horror actors. Pontypool centers around a radio broadcaster who is stuck in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. He's safe in his studio but he wants to help his listeners out and try and keep them safe. Towards the middle of the film, we actually find out how the outbreak began and it explains how the virus is spread. And it's such an interesting take on, you know, reasons behind zombie infections in movies. And I thought it was really interesting, but towards the end, the movie sort of started to lose its momentum and it just didn't feel as tense as the first half of the film. But overall, I think it's a fantastic zombie film and definitely worth your time. So number five has a rating of 5.3 with 14,120 votes and that is Contracted. Contracted centers around a woman who is sexually abused at a party and throughout the following week her body starts to exhibit symptoms of decay. This movie is very body horror laden and very sickening to watch if you have a weak stomach like me but we sort of see this woman's body fall apart as well as her mind. Her relationships with her mom and her, her friends start to fall apart as well as she sort of loses touch with humanity. I don't want to mislead you, this is not a classic zombie film. We actually watch this woman slowly, slowly descend into becoming a zombie. And it's really disturbing to watch nonetheless, but it's not your typical horror that you would expect from a zombie film. That being said, and without giving too much away, we do see a little bit of zombie action. I highly recommend Contracted, but if you happen to pick up Contracted too, I don't really recommend that as much. The film feels a lot more sloppy and the the main character isn't as likable. But yes, highly recommend Contracted. Not so much a fan of Contracted Phase 2. So number four has a 6.3 with 12,435 votes and that is Little Monsters. This is definitely my favorite on this list. It is an Australian production and it is directed by an Australian director, but I am definitely not biased. So Little Monsters is about a kindergarten teacher and a very incompetent chaperone who have to protect their class uh, from a zombie outbreak while they're on an excursion. I think what drew me into this film was the gore, obviously, um, but mostly the high stakes nature of it. A group of children within a zombie apocalypse sounds like a recipe for chaos. But what made me enjoy this film so much was the fresh sort of Australian humour that was used. Um, as well as like the heartfelt moments. Um, I really like the characters within this and I thought they did pretty well at character development. If I had to critique this film on one thing, it would be the use of Josh Gad. His character was supposed to be a children's television host who's a washed up drunk and he's very selfish and he's very mean off camera. And it was supposed to be funny, but I felt him just more edgy and unlikable. And they sort of tried to do a little bit of a character arc with him where he redeems himself 
but then it all comes tumbling down just for the sake of a joke. And yeah, I think they were sort of counting on him being a lot more funny than he was. So if you like your zombie movies with a bit of heart to them, I highly recommend Little Monsters. Number three has a rating of 5.5 with 8,082 votes, and that is Viral. So Viral centers around two teenage sisters who are caught up in an outbreak of a deadly parasitic virus. Um, the parasite clings to its host and it makes them want to infect and attack others. It's not your traditional zombie film because it's more like a parasite film, but I still registered that as a zombie film in my head and it has definitely um, a lot more of the sort of traditional zombie tropes within it. So this film is a really good exploration of the relationship between the two sisters and how they navigate their town being quarantined and how they survive the outbreak in general. This film also features a lot of body horror elements and some scenes are pretty gross to watch, but I think it's pretty tame compared to say Contracted. I highly recommend this one and it's also pretty relevant given today's sort of current situation. <laughs> Number two has a rating of 5.7 with 5,550 votes and that is Nightmare City or City of the Walking Dead. Nightmare City is about a reporter who is trying to report on the outbreak of people infected by a radioactive accident. I don't know the entire history behind it, I'm not sure if it's super correct, but it's actually one of the first films to feature fast moving zombies and it really ups the stakes in terms of horror for me personally. In every scene within this movie we see different groups of individuals succumb to this radioactive infection and it almost feels really hopeless because the zombies or the infected are so fast there's nothing you can do about it. The only critique I would have of it though personally is that the ending is the biggest bloody cop out I have seen in any movie ever. It was absolutely ridiculous. If I had written this for my year 11 English paper I would have got an F. Like that ending was absolutely trash. But the rest of the movie is fantastic and I think it redeems itself with the rest of the movie. And this movie is pretty contentious because you could argue that these people aren't zombies. Like they use guns and they climb. But they're also mindless. They're out for flesh. They bite people. They're pretty much zombies. Even though the director himself, Umberto Lindsay, claims that they're not zombies. To me personally, if you have a title, Walking Dead, that translates to zombies in my mind. If you watch one Italian zombie movie in your time, apart from zombie flesh eaters, of course, please let it be Nightmare City because it is fantastic and it's worth your time. So number one has a rating of 5.5 with 4,374 votes, and that is It Stains the Sands Red. The plotline of this film is pretty simple, but it's also quite unique. A drug addicted woman's car breaks down in the middle of the Nevada desert and she is stalked by a lone zombie. As she travels with limited supplies to get through the desert to an air base, she is stalked relentlessly by this singular zombie. The woman is pretty small and frail and so it's quite easy to understand why she can't simply just take on the zombie. It's not like she has many weapons at hand and even though throughout most of the film there's only two characters on screen, the woman and the zombie, the film never feels stale. There's always something going on or there's always some sort of development that keeps the film interesting. When I finally got Matt to watch this film he actually asked if it was directed by a woman because we see a lot of things from the female perspective. Of course the protagonist is a female and the male Men who are portrayed throughout this film aren't the best. They aren't portrayed very nicely. But I actually had to tell him it is directed by a male, but it's an interesting observation nonetheless. There are particular scenes throughout this film that are pretty graphic. One features a female sanitary product being used in a very creative way. So be warned, don't eat food while watching this film because it's pretty gross. But nonetheless, if you are looking for a unique take on the zombie genre, It Stains the Sands Red is perfect. So that concludes my list. Thank you very much for watching if you stuck through it. Um, let me know if you agree or disagree with some of these um, choices. And also let me know what you would put there instead or any other underrated zombie films you think I should check out. And I should mention again, the definition of zombie within this video has been stretched quite a bit. So please forgive me. And let me know also if you don't consider these films to be underappreciated or underrated in any way. I'd be interested to hear your take on that. And once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.